All right, hello everybody and welcome. Long time no see. And yeah, this is uh, basically, you could say it's a follow up of the Salami game video. I'm just gonna, I was basically stuck with an idea for a long time and I wanted to represent it in the wrong way, I think. And what came to my mind after I watched a couple of, or not a couple, I mean, I basically, whenever I can, I watch the Forex guys from DVS and Don Bo. And this idea to represent the problem came to my mind by looking at, at pineapple positions and I called the problem um, the pineapple fallacy. So what is a pineapple position? It is something that Don or name that Don came up with, Don Bo came up with. It's basically just an added position, like when the price goes lower or when the price goes higher, that you add to your position. And what the, what's the, the fallacy going to be is... Um, Obviously, going to talk about this later, but let's, let's first jump into into an example here. Let's say we have an asset, for example, gold or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It moves down here, moves sideways. It breaks out. It moves up. It goes sideways again. And now we want to have we have a decision. Let's say on the higher time frame, this looks like it's going to go down, and then it's going to form like a bottom wick or an upward trend on the higher time frame again. And we are basically speculating on this to drive up and we want to have an entry around here. And we want to have, if this does not turn around immediately, we want to have a second entry down here. And our stop loss would be roughly below the last support. So it's for, for simplicity reasons, just call this price one, right? So the asset is here at a price, which is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, exactly here, basically. And up here is five. So this would be where we want to first enter. And five would, for the time being, be our target and where two is this would be our second entry second oh. forget about this entry and one would be our stop loss I will later on color scheme this as well so it's easier to see what's going on Three is our first entry. <clears throat> and this is our main TP. And this is our, let's call it like, let's call it emergency TP. If something goes wrong. And we do expect that the price from here comes up and hits at round five. All right. So far, so good. I think this is um, pretty easy to understand. Like we have a trend right on the higher time frame. Let's say we have a trend like this. And basically what we want to do is we want to jump in around here. And our stop is around here. Okay, I will clean this up and see you in the next sheet. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, we color coded everything nicely. You're gonna ask yourself why I'm gonna repeat this. I had to cut this in a really weird way together. But that being said, red is our stop loss. Orange is gonna be our entries. And green is gonna be our TPs. So. What would happen now if we only take one entry? This is what, we, what we're gonna first, first look at. We have only one entry at three. Our TP is gonna be at five. And our difference between target and our entry is two. So the delta from our entry to our target is gonna be two. Five minus three is two. 
and our stop loss is going to be the same distance basically from 3 to 1 is delta minus 2 which would be our stop loss so how do we calculate the expected value now of this trade we have to assign the trade a specific chance to hit so let's go for the typical Don Bow trade which is around 80% <laughs> but for the for the purpose of the video 80% is totally fine I know a lot of traders will not hit this this win rate but Let's assume it is 80% to win this trade. So this would be our probability or P to win at 80%. So we put in 0.8. And same here, this is our probability to lose. So this PL and this P, we win, which is at 20%. And the only thing that we have to do now is have to add both of these together. This is 1.6, this is minus 0.4, and both of these together make an EV of 1.2. So what's really interesting now here is this is only one contract, because we only have one, one position, one contract. If we go for four more positions than one, we have to add these together. But um, you will easily see what that means in the next video. We basically will have to divide. Now we have, we have to only divide this by one because it's only one contract. But our EV per contract is going to be interesting. And we're going to look at this in the next example. This was still pretty, pretty easy. But it's going to get um, a tiny bit more complicated. So we already know that trade, the first trade that we put in from here to here, gave us an EV of 1.2, right? This is 1.2 EV. Keep in mind that this was for one contract only. Thing is, if we add contract sizes now, let's say we had this trade at the same place and we had two entries at the same place. This would obviously double to 2.4 EV. The thing is, what we really want to know is the EV per contract. It's going to be more important like a bit later. I'm going to, going to explain it a bit more. But when we're going to add a position now, so this would be our first position. This would be our second position. What we want to do now is we want to calculate both positions together. And then we want to see how is our EV per contract. We could basically call it like the efficiency of the position, right? So the next position we're going to look at is this down here. Because this is where we want to add when the price comes down. Or well, let's say in this example, the price did come down here anyways, but we did not take an entry and it, it just came back up to five. And this was our expected value here. What would be our expected value if we have our stop loss at one and our second entry down here? So for the second entry, call this SE. <coughs> our expected value would be our stop loss delta right from two to one it's minus one times the chance that we hit the stop loss which we estimated at 20 percent or 0.2 and we're gonna add this to our overall chance that we win the trade times what we win in the trade. What do we win in the trade from two to five? That's three. So this would be three times probability that we win the trade, which estimated at 0.8 or 80%. 
this would be 2.4, this would be um, 0.2. So overall our EV would be 2.2 EV. You can already see, which is, I mean, obviously not surprising, our EV goes up by one, which, surprise, surprise, is exactly this distance that we moved down. Okay. So let's add both together, because we need the actual EV of both positions together, right, when we hit our TP. So both together, <clears throat> will give us overall EV of 3.4. All right, very nice. So now we need to know what is the EV per contract, right? Because we want to basically see how efficient is every position that we have. And we want to compare single positions as well and basically average entries with the same size. The same size. Cannot compare apples with bananas. So we also want to compare the same. If we want to compare EVs, we have to compare the same size. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to divide this by two, which is going to be 1.7 EV per contract. Let's call it per C. We can overall already see that adding a position here is way more efficient than just having one position and let it ride and having a wider stop. The difference in EV is 0.5, right? If we compare this with this. Remember, this is our initial position here. This is when we add it. And we are calculating still per position. So we got 0.5% more out of it in terms of EV. So what does that make, make for our profit? This is basically roughly um what is it can't make this in my head but it's uh maybe around 40 percent like roughly let's just call it um, 50 percent would be 0.6 yeah let's call it just just roughly call it 40 percent more ev by adding, adding our position here. Of course, this will this will um, will not change the fact that our probabilities, of course, in live trade can change, right? It's not going to be guaranteed that we have an 80% win chance. And what we want to do a lot of the times, we don't want to aim for such a high target when we add it in. Because we will already guess that our probability to hit the target is going to be lower once we add the second position and the numbers for our position came lower and our average position is lower. For example, what we could do now is we could start to aim for this resistance area here. And we could just aim from our average entry, which would be like around 2.5. So for the second trade, or in general for both trades, let's start to aim for only this. And here we would aim for only this. And this would be the stop loss. All right. Obviously, if you calculate this now, the EV is going to be lower, but 
we're gonna look at this on the next sheet because there's not enough space here anymore and we're gonna clean this up a little bit again. All right, welcome back. We cleaned this up once more. And now what we wanna see is how does the EV look like if we recap our TP to four? And it will look like this. Let's quickly do the math. We have the range from from here to here on our first entry, basically on the re entry, and from here to here. This is one times chance, right? Plus minus this is two now delta here is minus two times the chance which gives us a whooping v of point four on the upper trade and on lower trade with this stop loss and with this target I'm not going to do all the writing again. It's going to be 1.4. Oh, this was lower trade. <laughs> so what do we do now to get the overall EV? Or to get the, I mean, the overall EV is pretty obvious. We add both together, it would be 1.8. But that's not what we want to do. We want to see per contract, which is divided by two, which is going to be 0.9 per contract. So as you can see, this is obviously going to be lower in terms of EV on paper. Let's call it that way. But you have to keep in mind that in a real trade, you would also think that your probability for it going to the TB, TP that you were chosen before is going to be lower as well, right? This was just a little, a little um, thought experiment how the V would look like if we do a lower TP. But this is... Um, be fair this is not really the whole point of the video right because this was just i would say i mean this was was pretty basic so far and you might ask yourself okay cool so all the trades have a positive ev you add a position and you might go for um, for a lower tp it is still having a, a positive ev and as you could see before the EV of adding and going for the same target even has a higher EV, right? So this was on the on the, the slide before um, with target five. <clears throat> and one entry with 1.2. And as far as I remember, Target five, two entries was one point one point seven, right? So our V is continuously going up if we add positions and if we have the same TP. And you might uh, might think, okay, or you might ask, okay, so what's the problem from here to here? We already have a jump of 40% in terms of EV. We lose some EV if we cut at the trade earlier for the safety, because we think this might not be the correct number anyways. And our probability of hitting is going down. But in this theory case, so, so what's wrong with this strategy, right? The problem with the strategy is you don't realize, or you will not never realize how much you're missing out on profits if you add in this way. So let me show you an example now of how I would add to the trade and why it mathematically makes 
way more sense to do it that way. All right, welcome back. And you might have already realized that our EV is highly dependent, obviously, of how close we are to our stop loss, right? So the distance between the stop loss and our entry matters a lot. So the main problem I have with adding one position, it will only lower our average entry to around here. But that's obviously not ideal. Ideally, what we would want is to have our average entry as low as possible. So ideally, exactly at two, we cannot force, I mean, if we know that it will exactly bounce here. If it would exactly bounce here, right in front of the one, then obviously we would want our entry as close as possible, like let's say at 1.1 1. Uh, 1. 1 or even closer. So ideally, we would have our stop loss as close as possible, but as wide as necessary for maximum EV. So what that means is we only add one position and we average out right in the middle. First of all, there is no guarantee that we will even get out in profit in, a, in like a real life scenario. It might be the case that we are forced very often to close break even when we could have exited with a profit. So what instead what we want to do is we want to at least if we have a position here, so this would be our first entry or this like a 1x contract or like a like a 1x entry and what we would at least want to do is double the size on our second entry. So what this will do is it will lower our average entry to around 2.33 and now if we calculate the EV of this trade it is obviously you can already see it's going to be much higher. So how do we calculate this again? We do or we take the EV of this trade that we had before. Right, This was our one to one trade which was 1.2 EV, <clears throat> all of this. Then we combine it with our two trades that we have here. Which is, we already calculated this before as well, as you remember. Which is, let me find it. I forgot myself as well. It should be two point two, right? Yeah, exactly. It's two point two because it's one more than the difference here. So this would be two point two EV for each trade. So we have two of these, so this times two makes 4.4. <clears throat> so now what we want to do is, again, we add both of these EVs together, right? Because we need the EV of the whole trade. So this is 1.2 plus 4.4. Which makes five point six. All right, now we want to see our efficiency or our EV per contract again, right? So we divide this by three and we get a nice number of one point eight six six six. All right, so as you can see, we jumped from 1.7 to 1.86 with this simple change. Of course, you can argue that you added more risk, right? But did you really add so much risk? We added 
30% position size, but that doesn't mean we added 30% risk, right? And you might also you might also think that this is not really a significant change. But this is let me quickly quickly calculate it. I haven't done that. So this is nine nine point eight percent less profit. overall so with this simple change in your strategy you can make overall can roughly make 10 percent more profit per trade and then the last question you might ask is okay cool but i would still rather take the lower risk or whatever even though it's not really that much lower and and rather take the the little bit less ev and go for the safer trade, which is not even really safer, to be honest, right? Um, it's really not, not significant if you, you also lower your average entry. All right, so I felt like I had to make a little cut here and explain a little bit what I really meant in that part. I think it came out all the wrong way and there's something that I really really want to make super clear risk is not the same as volatility and what I said in that part is I stumbled a little bit and said okay it's not really lower risk because it is not like if we have or if we jump from 1.7 EV per trade right or per contract not per, per trade per contract and per trade to 1.866 this inherently should mean or this inherently means let's say usually that we have lowered our risk our overall risk <clears throat> but where you have to make or where you have to draw the line or where you have to make the difference is what we do add is we do add position size and I also said it's it's not even 30% but like the posi I mean or the risk is not 30% that's kind of true we do add 33% 33.33% to our position right but effectively our negative outcome jumps from 0.6 to 0.8 <clears throat> Does that mean though that we add this amount of risk? No, because as I said, like hiring our EV automatically means that our risk is lower. What this inherently adds though is volatility. So there is a threshold, right? There will be a threshold where we would add so much volatility that we add so much risk of ruin depending on our strategy and how much risk we take per trade that it could mean that our risk of ruin <clears throat> is too high but that's a topic for or another video I just wanted to really clarify this right we are adding 33% position but in general it means our save or trade is safer because we are adding EV a contract which makes our trade more efficient which gives our trade more profit per trade which makes our trade overall lower risk the only problem is if we if we reach this threshold where we add so much position size that one or two bad trades could basically ruin us or not even one or two it could even be more but where we actually higher or, or we actually increase our risk of ruin in such a way that this is getting not not unprofitable it's, it's still profitable but where the volatility could could ruin us all right back to the video 
the main problem here is this is per trade. And the last part of this video is going to be how much does this really count, right, in, in the long term? And if you compound and if you know the rules of, of exponential growth, you, you will realize that this, this, this is a really big deal. So let's say you grow your account every day 1%. You usually make 1% a day, right? Now, you make 1.1% a day. Say you make one trade a day and you make 10% more profit, okay? So what's gonna be the difference here in a year or in two years? And the difference is gonna be very, very significant. So this last, Part of video, let's actually hop on onto the compound calculator and show you the examples. All right, so I pulled up the compound calculator for you, and as you can see, as insignificant as it might look, this is for a ten thousand dollar initial balance, and here we have a one percent interest rate. And on this side, we have a 1.1% interest rate, and this is going for over two years. And it makes a whopping difference of 75% profit. Also, what's really important to note here, this is what we calculated for one position. This is not the EV that you get out of the whole trade, right? This is just the efficiency that we calculated per contract. So overall, as you remember, what we calculated for the whole trade in terms of EV was 5.6 for the whole trade. So if we look at the difference now, from here to the trade that we had before, which was overall, as far as I can remember, 0.2. So the difference is 3.4 here was from our old trade, right, with only two entries and this difference here is a whopping 65% EV difference. So now I'm just gonna, gonna blend this in at the end. Um, if you wanna look at if you wanna look at the difference in profit now from 1% interest to 1.65, it's gonna be this number. Goodbye.